So last week we start with uh, the manual uh, journal entry. So let me start from the journal, uh, I mean the journal categories and uh, the sources. So how is it different from uh, EBS? So I'm just adding a new source for this. So let me say the source name maybe KK. Uh, so here we have uh, two things basically new, that is new or that, that is not available in EBS environment. So one is that uh, source key and the other one is accounting date uh, rule. So others are like the freeze uh, journal and uh, import reference and request journal approval, all are similar. So what is that uh, import uh, or using uh, the source key? So, so source key is nothing but when we are importing the journal address, basically we have the description of it or the batch name for that. So if we are enable this part, we are enabling this particular option, import using key, system will pick this as an uh, journal uh, name and after that we will have a sequence of this numbering so accordingly system will uh, generate the journal entry name so that is the option that we have and uh, the other one what we have is that uh, accounting date rule so accounting rule date rule is nothing but uh, if let's say we are importing on august but the august period is closed so what what, what do we want uh, to tell the system that uh, how to take the action so whether system should fail or system should uh, leave as it is and import the transaction or uh, system will uh, roll the date that is uh, take the available open period and import the transaction so that is what accounting uh, date rule and uh, the journal reference is just a reference that we will get from this approach so that we have it in uh, ebs as well similar to that and even the require journal approval also the same thing. We have it in EBS. That is, if you want to enable approval for this journal or not. And then we have uh, freeze. So freeze, basically we have yes or no in EBS, but here we have uh, the partial allow import, uh, I mean import correction only. So if we allow this option, so basically system will <coughs> allow us to do only corrections. So if we are enabling, yes, system will not allow us to do any sort of uh, journal co correction or anything in the journal. Journal will be completely freezed. But in case of partial allow import correction, it will allow us to correct the data where it will download as kind of a web ID where we can update the data and we can uh, re-push the data. If it is no, it will not uh, freeze the journal. We can, uh, we, we can basically make the changes before posting this. So this is the partial allow to what extent it will allow what extent it is partial it is only for the corrections import if we are importing the let's say we have a batch running every day so we are importing this mm. particular batch so after importing system will allow only if there are any errors or any correction to be made apart from that it will not allow us to do any sort of uh, things inside this journal entry okay can you just repeat what was source key? I just missed it. Yeah, source key is nothing but we have this uh, a journal batch name. So when you are uh, importing a journal, basically it, it takes a particular combination to generate this uh, batch name and numbering. So if you are enabling this option, basically whatever the term that we are giving it here in the source key, system will pick and generate the journal uh, uh, entry name. Okay, so whatever you give, that name will be used instead of using a combination. Yeah, no, even still we will have combination, but if at all we wanted to capture any combination, we can give as a uh, source key. 
Okay. Yeah. So this is all about uh, the journal source. It is almost similar to EBS with few additions like the partial allow import correction and uh, the accounting date rule and then using the key, source key. So that's all we have. So I have created a name called KK Fusion and I have- One more, said, one more question, uh, yeah. Arun. So in this accounting date rule, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, if I if I want uh, the journal source to work, how it is working in EBS? So what should I give in that? I should be giving leave alone. No, can because you if I no, um, no. If, uh, what you are saying is the accounting date rule is not there in uh, EBS, correct? No. So if I if I keep roll date, which means anything which is coming in August, if the August month is closed. It will automatically get changed to October. Yeah, if that period is closed, it will uh, take the immediate uh, open period and it will uh, place the date. Okay, but I don't want that. I want uh, to you know keep the same thing as it is. So, uh, uh, but uh, you know, so in that case, that's what I'm asking. So I can only keep leave alone. If I keep leave alone, which will lie over there, but it will not uh, throw an error or it will be like still in august period we will not be able to post it is yes right? correct yes correct and what is that fail if i fail if i click on fail which means you will get a notification or something like that no import itself will get failed okay import uh, program itself will get failed yeah okay which means the journal itself will not be imported yeah yes okay okay fine, fine. yeah got it thank you okay Shall we move? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Similarly, I'm giving for uh, the uh, uh, what do you call the category as well. The same name I'm just uh, replicating. So for category only these three fields are there. Yeah. Yes. That's it. We have only these three fields. And do we have the concept of uh, document sequencing assignment uh, here? Same only? Yeah, yes, we have. So, similar thing. We have it here. Okay. Well. Okay, okay. Okay. So, so what we will do is that uh, we, we have seen uh, the AFDA last class that is downloading directly from the application. So the other way of importing the journal entries are, is, is that uh, FBDA. It is file-based uh, data import. So basically how we did it for uh, chart of accounts. So similarly, we have template for uh, journal import where we will try to load through those templates. So I have downloaded the template and uh, we, we will try to see that uh, uh, like, like uh, how it is working. I'll, I'll show one case. I 
Are you able to see the screen? I mean, the Excel sheet I'm sharing. Yes. Is it visible? Yes, yes, visible. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so when we are loading this uh, chart of account values, we were uh, seeing that uh, Oracle has basically given an instruction and the overview how this will work and all those things. Similarly, here as well, we have this overview and uh, we have how to prepare the data and how to load it and uh, what are the validations that we have and all those things will be there along with the Oracle recommendation. So since I don't have uh, the, uh, what do we call, uh, the, the hierarchy and all those things, this is only an, a journal input. So I have only one tab with me. I'll just explain each uh, field. So basically status code is nothing but always it is new. So you can just select from here. And uh, ledger ID, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, take to this, like how to find this ledger ID from the application. Basically in ABS, if we wanted to understand this uh, or get this ledger ID, we will have to get from the backend. But in Fusion, we can just uh, get from the front end. I'll just show how we can get from the front end. Even uh, uh, business unit ID, everything we can get it from front end only. Business unit ID, similarly, we can get in front end itself. Okay. Even in EBS also, we can take it from front end. Only thing is we have to go to the diagnostics. Record, uh, yeah. Oh, from this is the ledger ID. Yeah. So manage primary ledger, there you go, you will automatically find the ledger ID. Yeah, yes. From here view, actually we can see this uh, query by Ed sample. Uh, it's column actually. So here if we wanted to oh, okay. hide or add any column, we, we can hide or add it. Like if we want to disable, we can disable. And if you want to enable, just we will go to column and we will enable this. Even option. we can bring more columns also. Uh, whatever column it is listed here, we can uh, take actually. Manage columns will not be there. Any additional columns? Yeah, that's what, whatever we have it here, okay. we can okay. take it. Okay, okay, fine. This is which screen in EBS, uh, Sadish? No, this, this is a very. This is a fusion screen. We do we don't have this concept in EBS only. That ledger ID we cannot see, and even column also we cannot hide and show. Okay, but but in which this is where like this is which point? This is a ledger ledger screen. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I have navigated to manage primary ledger. So from there, I have queried our ledger, that is KK ledger. And we are just trying to get this ledger ready. Because if you wanted to upload this uh, uh, journal import process, we will need uh, ledger ready. So we are just copying from here. So I'm just uh, showing like how to get uh, the ledger ID in Fusion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's move on. Okay. Okay, I'm resharing the template, the Excel sheet. So basically we have taken the uh, ledger ID and then we have uh, given the effective date, that is the transaction date. And uh, we, we have also given uh, the journal entry date. And maybe we will, uh, we will select the one which we created.
okay so others are like understandable like uh, the currency code and we have uh, the actual and then we have the segment one and segment two since we have created only two segments i have given it uh, so here if you see oracle has given the maximum segments that we can use that is uh, till 30. so we, since we have created only two i have only given two and then we have entered debit and credit then if you are using the foreign currency maybe we will have the converted uh, debit and credit as well and i'm just giving the batch name batch and journal name i have given it and i have just given the group id let me give a uh, group id 8091 And I have given the ledger name as well. So since we so don't have how yeah. to how to know which are the fields are mandatory and which is not mandatory from this template. Uh, on this template, basically mandatory and this thing we have marked with uh, what do you call the uh, red symbol or uh, the star asterisk star asterisk. Uh, yeah, yeah, asterisk. yeah. Okay, fine. fine. So, so mostly it is optional only if you are mandatory actually okay so so we have uh, given the values so that is i have just given a simple two line that is debit and credit So I'm creating this as a CSV file. So importing process, it is similar to what, what we did for COA loading. So that is load interface uh, file. So after that, we will uh, include the concurrent program that is uh, import journals. I mean, I'm we are not able to see the screen other than this Excel. Yeah, just. This is just you are trying to create a journal, manual journal entry using Excel, right? Using Excel upload. Yeah, yes, correct. If we have a bulk upload, we can use this option basically. Mm. So this will allow more in maybe even 40, 50,000 rows, it will allow us to upload. You will not have any performance issue also. Okay. Okay, so I have added the program import journal and I have attached the file that uh, we have created as an CSV. Okay.
can we submit a request set also like yeah, yes, what we, we have can, in uh, submit and we can create also our own request set uh creating request set in the sense you are asking about the concurrent program yeah multiple concurrent programs i want to put it in a request set and uh, whenever i run i will run only that request set. is it possible that uh, we haven't worked on basically we have given only the single reports like on what cases we will have uh, the request set like any particular case we will have multiple. yeah yeah so what i wanted to do is i wanted to uh create a request set and one request set is for let's say doing a, an ap invoice validation and okay. in that same request set once after the program is completed successfully i wanted to run the journal import okay uh, i mean this is in uh, the seeded one basically okay yeah it, it, it is seeded functionality basically so so the custom one we haven't uh, taken up as a uh, set of it but but we can configure i just wanted to know that okay. yeah like uh, this way you are asking i think so we will have one program and we will have other two programs attached to this uh, primary yeah correct 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 yeah basically we have it but uh, custom i'm not sure maybe i'll check and i'll get back to you like how to create okay but we have options are there okay so the program is done it is uh, in success so i'm just navigating to journals and uh, i'll import this journal what uh, we have uploaded But we have run that import journal program, na? Right? Yeah, we have run, but some cases it will not uh, pick actually. After we attach that, basically system will push the data, and from there we will have to attach our group ID and import uh, the journals. Okay, so so we, you have selected import journal, uh, you know journals, right? That program you yeah. have selected to run. Mm. So uh, that will only uh, you know post it till interface table. You are saying? Yeah, it will post into interface table. From interface table, we will give the group ID and we will get into base table. Okay, but in that program itself, import journal program itself, you cannot uh, run with the group ID. Yeah, there As we don't have way. option. If you see, we have attached only the import uh, journal. I mean, the program name, but uh, we will not uh, be able to attach the group IDs. I know, because in current the EBS there is a parameter, right? So here we don't have any parameters as such. Yeah, parameter here we don't have. They have given it uh, separately, like if. The same program we can run uh, from the schedule process as well, but we will have to run separately only. But uh, what is the group ID? This is the basic option that is available, right, for import journal. Yeah, group but ID group is what ID? we have given at an Excel sheet before we were uploading. So we gave eight zero nine one. I'll I'll just show one. Just no, I will tell. I'll tell Abhishek. Yeah. See, for, for example, if there are like uh, ten journals, okay. And in mm. that five journals, you are putting under one group ID. Yeah, remaining five, you can put under different group ID. So, so mm. what happens is everything will be grouped as one journal batch. Mm. So, or or maybe one journal, I can say mostly one journal, not a batch. One journal, it will it will group. If I if I have ten lines, in the ten mm. lines, I can give uh, five uh, you know lines. I one group ID, another five lines, another group ID. To make okay. it two different journals. uh yeah i can say like we can say like that right arun yeah yes correct it will make two different journals two different journals so what happens is like five will be one journal and if you wanted to import only five remaining five you don't want to import now then you can mm. give a group id in the parameter here yeah, yeah so it eventually even if it gets imported arun you were telling that it can get imported only till interface that's what you were telling right the the earlier process like, no. you are saying Oh okay okay. The earlier process no, missed... only till in interface. This one will take it to base table. Ah okay okay okay. 
Yeah, fine. Okay, so I have selected the group ID. Uh, so basically, we have given it an Excel sheet that is 8091. So let me submit and uh, get this particular journal into uh, Fusion application. Did you give a journal name there uh, in the Excel? Uh, yeah, we gave journal name. So we, we just gave HW test. So it will be under uh, our attribute basically we will have it in uh, brackets so th this is our batch name so this is batch description and this is uh, batch entry name and uh, journal entry description okay okay Okay, our import process is done. So maybe we can uh, check in our journal. Okay, so this is our uh, journal basically. So it has been imported with the source KK Fusion. So let me try to open this. So if you see here, we have enabled the source key. So what we have given as a journal batch is only the HW test. But since we have enabled the source key as well, System has taken KK underscore fusion as well. So this is how basically the journal batch name and uh, journal name will be generated by the system. So we can see that uh, so, the source, yeah. Yeah, so, so there is one cor uh, correction, uh, Abhishek. You are telling me. Yeah, Abhishek. So this group ID I was telling uh, that group ID, even multiple journals can have uh, same group ID. All will be mm. uh, uh, tied to a batch. So if I have multiple group IDs, then multiple batch will be generated. It doesn't mean multiple mm. journals will be generated. Only multiple batch. Okay. Okay. So group ID is for uh, is to create a batch. So one group ID I can have uh, oh. five journals created under one batch. Okay, yeah, so, so, that's right. so, basic, so basically one group ID is equivalent to one is to one with the batch, not one is yeah, to one with the, the batch. Journal. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, in our case, yeah. it is one is to one. So I mean, it applies similar thing. Yeah, but uh, what you're saying is correct. Like uh, we will, for a batch, we will have multiple journals. Yeah, correct. So I can give the group ID to multiple journals also, same group IDs, yeah. if it is un under one batch. Yeah. So I'll just uh, post this transaction. So yeah, PDA will be basically useful if a business is running kind of an uh, 
let's say we, we create all the transaction in the subledger and on the end of the day we will just take the extract and we will load it or maybe we will uh, take it from the third party system and maybe we are loading it or maybe we are migrating the trial runs for those cases this fbat fbdi will help a lot in terms of uh, the performance of loading a huge values it will help more because we can load in thousands so that is about fbdi and uh, the i mean we have basically two ways of loading one is using the template and the other one is uh, we have a spreadsheet that we can uh, download uh, from here so that we saw in last class, uh, create journal and spreadsheet. And we have seen the manual uh, journal creation as well. So now we have created uh, the journals and uh, we will try to reverse this particular journal what uh, we have created. Yeah, so this is enabled. And I'll just show. So if you see here, we will just click reverse and we'll be able to reverse this particular transaction. Even in Artel also we have this reverse option, no? Yeah, yes, Artel also we have reverse option. Similar thing only. Yeah. So only thing is we, we, we will have to attach the reversal criteria. Uh, maybe I'll show like after reversing this, I'll show how to define this criteria and how is this working. So actually to test one case, I have defined the reversal criteria and I have attached this with uh, ledger. So that is why system is allowing us to reverse this particular transaction. Yeah, if that ledger doesn't have a reversal criteria, then which means we'll not be able to use reverse any journal in that future. Yeah, correct. That is there in R2 launch. When we define the ledger, we yes. have to give a reversal set criteria, right? Yeah, yes. For the default uh, category and sources which was given by Oracle, we, we will have it. But apart from that, we will have to define the criteria for those things. Yeah, right. So I'll, uh, maybe we, we know that, but I'll just I'm just uh, yeah yeah just show show. So we just click manage or journal reversal criteria set. So for each uh, category that we have defined, basically we will have uh, the, the rules that we can define for each uh, categories. So the category that uh, we have taken is that uh, KK underscore okay. DJ. Okay, so here uh, I, I can even select the, the reversal period, but I have selected no default so that I can pick from there. And even if I'm selecting maybe the next period, I can select the date as well as first day and if i wanted to choose the the method how do i want to reverse that also i can select from yes so this option basically in ebs we will have at uh, while we are defining the sub uh, options so where yeah. we will see how to summarize this option. so here they have kept under reversal criteria 
So if we want to enable the automatic uh, reversal option that we can enable, whether we wanted only the automatic reversal or also the, uh, the posting. So I have just clicked uh, none. So after this, so the, I'll, I'll attach this particular uh, thing what we have created in uh, Ledger. So we'll go to define ledger from there define accounting configuration under that we will have specify ledger options uh arun one minute yeah the entry that you have created uh, did you show that entry or i missed i mean we actually didn't create manually we loaded with the excel sheet yeah yeah, yeah, I understand. That, that entry was so you, that entry was shown. If you want, we can he can show. Yeah, yeah we can go back. No problem. I'll okay, okay. It. That screen in that screen only you selected one and you you did a reversal. Yeah, right? he selected yes, a reverse. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, That's good. Continue, continue. Sorry. Yeah. So we we have just uh, attached the journal reversal criteria. Uh, so unless we attach this, we will not be able to reverse particular transaction. Where is journal reversal criteria? Just a moment. So you wanted to see the rule or like where will we attach? No, where we, yeah, just come down, come down. Just come down. Yeah, yeah. here in the reversal side. What he did now, no, that he created a criteria set as KK, the same criteria set he added here, the reversal. Okay, okay. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah, if you want, maybe we can create a manual JV and we can uh, reverse that as well, if you want. Yeah, should we create or uh, we can move on? Abhishek, what do you say? We can, we can create one, na? Yeah, fine. Okay. So I'll just navigate uh, to journals. And I'm just uh, creating a manual entry, create journal. So I'll just say six zero, nine zero. Why the journal batch and name are not mandatory? I mean, uh, I don't if you know. don't give automatically, it will select uh, some default value. No, I don't think it will select a default value now, but. Uh,
Transactions have created a manual entry and I'm just posting this transaction. Oh, automatically it is selected batch and yeah, it is just saying manual. Whereas in EBS, it is mandatory. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, let's move on. Abhishek, you are clear, right? How to create a journal? Yeah, yeah. And do, do you want to see the reversal or we can move on? No, it's okay. We can move on. Okay, fine. Reversal, same screen only, na? whatever you have Yeah, shown. yeah, same thing. Yeah. So basically, we have seen uh, the, the the normal uh, up upload option, and uh, then we have seen uh, the, the manual entry. We have seen the reversal, and uh, now let, let's try to create an uh, foreign currency journal. So I'll just show. I mean that is a simple thing, but still, I'm just showing where do we define this daily rates and all these things. Okay. Currencies you might see, right? Yeah, under yeah, currencies. Um, so under manage uh, conversion rate, basically we will give uh, uh, daily rates. So we have the rate types. We will basically define the rate types here. So after uh, defining the rate types, we will uh, give uh, the daily rates. Okay. So maybe we can select uh, INR. And we have, we, we can select a particular uh, period. So since already it is defined for most of the rate types, uh, so may, maybe we can avoid this, but uh, this is the way that uh, we will uh, add the rates. Yeah, and can you try to create a delete on rate? Yeah, sure. So what is the procedure to delete? You have to create in spreadsheet and then again reload it. Eh? Yeah, from spreadsheet we will reload it. Oh, the, otherwise you cannot do a delete here from the screen. You you want to delete this? I I, I just wanted to delete only one uh, rate. I don't want to delete everything. Maybe okay. the first one, USD to INR, that one. No, basically we will not uh, delete the rate actually. Uh, if you see here, we have only the view and uh, the format options. But we will not be able to delete the, the, the values that we oh, have loaded. In, EB, in EBS, I can delete now. For example, I have a corporate rate and that I am creating uh, INR to USD to INR, corporate rate, maybe uh, for uh, February 1st. 
Yeah. Uh, and then February second, I've created a different date. But uh, I wanted to delete the first one, which I might have wrongly loaded. I don't want it to keep it only. So I can go and click on delete button, and it will get deleted. Here we cannot do that. Yeah, we can only edit. If you want to change, maybe from seventy to sixty five, we can change. Uh, but uh, I don't think we have uh, the delete option for the currency conversion. Okay, so if I in case I wrongly configured the conversion for the future. Yeah. Uh, but I don't wanted that to use for now. Maybe I wanted to inactivate. I, if I don't wanted to delete, at least I wanted to inactivate it. Otherwise, if I saw, if I create some uh, future date, it will automatically take that particular currency exchange rate. I, that shouldn't happen. So to inactivate it, what should I do? That also is not possible. Yeah, inactive also we don't have. Basically, if you see, we can change only the rates. Uh, that, that is, we can change from seventy to sixty-five, or the inverse of it. At least transactions and all we can delete here, yet, or that is also not possible. Transaction in the sense, so uh, the the AP invoices you are saying. Yeah, yeah, AP invoices. AP invoices, I mean, we wanted to delete or you wanted to, I mean, no. I wanted to delete. I wanted to delete. Currently, people, they used to go and delete. AP and AR, we have an option okay. to delete. So they just go and delete. So I'm just asking, you don't want to go now. Maybe you want some PC, AP, AR, model, then you can see. And yeah. what about the value set value? So today, mm. we have shown the value set values, right? Chart of account. Mm. Yeah. And that two values, company and so there. If I wanted to delete, that is also not possible. Yeah, that is also not possible actually. So basically, delete functionality itself is not there in Fusion. If you ask me. Yeah, most of the places they have restricted actually. Oh, okay. So which yeah, but uh, delete of what? Delete of what, uh, Sajish? Delete of everything. See, uh, if I currently yes, can I can create a category? I can delete it. I can create on source journals so they can delete it. I can create currency exchange rates and then I can delete it. I can create mm. OTP invoice delete it. Value set values like uh, we create RE1, RE2, RE3. If I don't want to use RE2, RE3, then I go and delete it and I create something else. So mm. that kind mm. of option is not here. Here you cannot do a decision at all. Most of the places. Like we can only do a modification. We can go and update the values, but we will not be able to do it. Once created, it is created in one you can only change the values. You will not be able to delete it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll move on. Okay, can we move on? Yeah, one more point. Yeah. Uh, in this uh, rate only, can you go hmm. to the daily rates? Yeah. Yes. So I have create. I wanted to create. Can we create one uh, rate for one, one whole month? I mean. Yeah, like, we can uh, create. Yeah, just take some new currency so that it will not be there. Can you okay. take uh, USD to let's keep uh, KWD? Okay. Some currencies USD and keep KWD two currency and then let's try to create one. So we'll yeah, define yeah. a new yeah. currency maybe. Currency is already there, no? I mean, okay, let me check. Uh, what you are saying is KW. Yeah, anything, anything, whatever it is, whichever has not been configured, you can take that. Okay. You can take uh, AED also, no issues. Yeah, it was there. AED. Anything which you think is not configured in the system. Yeah, fine. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll check the dates if this is not configured. Yeah, okay, fine. And keep uh, rate type. That is configured, huh? Yeah, this is almost configured. I mean, it is only corporate is configured, I guess. You can take some other rate type. No? Okay, I'll take user maybe. Uh, 
I'll take uh, maybe if it's straight. Is it mandatory that you have to create from the screen only or you can directly create now there itself? No, there we cannot create actually. If you see there, we will have option only to search. We, we will have to load oh. it actually. Okay, so again that is also one more uh, uh, concern. Because in EBS today, you can create one month, you can directly create. You don't have to do any yes, yes. Uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, in the screen itself, directly from the screen, that will be more easy rather than you know opening this form, this uh, Excel and loading. Okay. I mean, from date and to date, I think you have not given. You have given USD. Uh, How do you know which uh, date format you have to use? The yeah, system will automatically okay. take it. Automatically take it. Okay. okay. So once after, okay, you, you do this, but once after you create this, Maybe I create a uh, create a mistake like like conversion rate is twenty five. Maybe it okay. should have been twenty six. So okay. in that case, after creation, what should I do then? Yeah, we can change it. I'll, I'll try to create a uh, change. Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
So if you see, we have changed from uh, 25 to 20. So that is only for uh, yeah. 31st. Okay, so which means if I wanted to change a uh, whole month, I have to go and keep on changing every day. Yeah, yes. One time update is not possible. Yeah, one time update, it is not possible. Okay, these kind of uh, improvisations, I do not know when they are going to do. Oracle. Okay, fine. Yeah, proceed. Sorry. Sorry to stop you. I just want to no, see no. whether they have done some changes on this or not. So, do we want to see this uh, foreign currency journal or we can move on? I think we can move on because only the currency and the rate, yeah. you know, apart from that, everything is same. No? Yes. Abhishek, you, you tell you wanted to see the foreign currency journal? No, it's okay. Because the only change he is going to do is he will change the currency and then he will put the exchange rate there. That's it. Okay, okay. Two columns you will add, and then that will be a foreign currency. Okay, so maybe the next thing uh, we can see the budget part. Just one news if you guys are interested. Dhoni yes, has retired. Wow. At last, at last, small formats of cricket. Yes, uh, like he has posted in his Instagram. From nineteen twenty nine hours, consider me retired. So, which means no final send off match and all for him. No, no, nothing. Arun, you are Dhoni fan. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just watch cricket be. for entertainment. Okay. All Chennai, all Chennai are Dhoni fan. Yeah, mostly they are uh, because of IPL. Okay, okay the, the first set of that for the budget is that uh, oh, enabling. Yeah, one more thing. So, here, yeah, uh, yeah, can, yeah, even I have not worked on the budgeting part. Can you just give a brief introduction what what we can use it for instead of going to the setups? Okay. So yeah. yeah, sure. So basically, we yeah, have... budgeting is pretty new. Okay. Yeah. So, for, so if we take budgeting, so we have two things when we speak about the budget. So one is the normal budget which we use, and the other is encumbrance. So the difference between the budget and the encumbrance is that in budget, we will allocate a, a particular set of amount for a particular period. If we know uh, this is the expense that I'll make on the given period, let's say I'll pay rent every month. So I know that I'll pay 10,000 for this particular year. So what I will do is that starting from January to December for the rent, I'll allocate 10,000 rupees or maybe for a year, 1,20,000 rupees. So this I know, so this we call budget. So for a given period, we will try to restrict our spending. And then we have uh, encumbrance. So encumbrance is something where we don't know what will happen or what are we going to procure in next uh, maybe 12 months. So for example, we can say that uh, we, we, are manufacturing, we are into the manufacturing industry. So we might require uh, maybe 100 quantities of raw material or we might need uh, 120 quantities of raw material. Even though we have uh, the analysis and the market trends taken out based on the analysis, but still it might uh, go up or down, or maybe we will not know how to manage this. So even though we don't know, if we wanted to have control on our finance, so what we will do is that we will enable this encumbrance. 
so that we will control our expenditure and we can maximize our uh, profit ratio so this is the basic thing between uh, both the ledger i mean uh, the budget and uh, encumbrance but the basic understanding is that we wanted to restrict our spendings is what we call budget or the encumbrance encumbrance okay yeah yeah encumbrance is something that we don't know like the expense ratio and we wanted to have a control of it like in case of rent we know that uh, this is what going to happen but in case of this this is what we call budget in case of encumbrance we don't know this is the expense that we are going to incur so that is why if you take budget this will happen at uh, the the ledger in ebs we will have only at the gl part if we speak about the budget but whereas the encumbrance it will happen at the purchasing it will happen at the receipt it will happen at the invoicing so it will happen at multiple places like the purchasing and the invoicing part the reason being is that we will not know that we are going to purchase so and so stationary items or so and so items that is required for our raw material things so yeah 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 we got so which means what you are saying is for all the uh, let's say uh, uh, operational related items yeah. um, or the capex items which is which is like a known figure yes. so we can put that we can uh, you know uh, ideally forecast it and then uh, keep it uh, you know in our managed budgetary controls in evs so that uh, it will not have an issue so like how we are creating a recurring journal it will keep on uh you know doing uh, its own uh, you know thing whatever we have contributed but for the encumbrance you are saying that if you want to keep a limit a threshold on some of the expenses which we are making then that can be configured using this encumbrance yes correct basically if we are able to focus or we are not able to focus is going to differentiate whether this is in budget or the encumbrance mm -hmm. okay. okay so abhishek you have any doubt on this no no i understood maybe when we go deep we can yeah yeah when we go deep we will we will yeah we will get more questions okay. so first tell me this define budgetary control uh, and define encumbrance accounting are the mandatory configuration or it is only optional configuration no this is only optional this is not mandatory Okay, fine. Yeah. Because companies might use budget and or uh, the encumbrance, they might not use our as well. Like there are most of the companies where they don't use budget. Okay, but in EBS also we have this concept, right? Yeah, EBS also we have. So only thing or only difference between the EBS and uh, the fusion part is that in EBS when we when we say this is an budget, it will work only on a ledger level. That is only on a GL level. Where mm -hmm. this will not be applicable for uh, the sub-ledger modules like EAP and uh, the other modules, expense yeah. modules. But here in Fusion, it will be applicable also for the sub-ledger modules like EAP. Budget, you are saying? Yeah, budget. Okay. Okay. Fine. And what kind of uh, maybe we can we can see it as you go ahead. But basically, what kind of controls it will give? That is what we need to. I guess I need to see it. basically we will uh, define budget for a particular account code combination so let's say we in our okay. case 10000 is our company and uh, mm -hmm. 331 is an account so for this combination we will we will allocate 10000 for rent or any other purpose for this particular account so above this okay. uh, limit we will not be able to spend uh, or we will need to increase our spending or the budget so again so, here we have okay. lot yeah. yeah so which means i just i just uh, have a question so let's say in ap module i am posting some of the rent feed and that rent feed i i will always post into some certain account which may be one for example yeah. so if i enable budget uh, on that particular feed and monthly i owe my landlord uh, only 10000 in case if i create 11000 it automatically restricts correct Yes, th there are two of yeah. Just uh, give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. Just, just open the app. We are honestly uh, confusing you. You open it and you show us. Then we. Yeah. 
So here, if you see, we have uh, two things. So one is uh, for the business unit and the other is for ledger. But whereas we don't have this option for uh, our uh, EPS. This is new in uh, Fusion. So let me query the ledger that what we have created. So I'll take KK ledger. So if you see here, budgetary control hasn't enabled. Okay. I'm just enabling the budgetary control. So here, if you see, whether we wanted to have only for the ledger, or we wanted to have also for the project, or either for the ledger or the project. So currently, you have enabled only the project module. So for our project is coming. If we enable payable module, then payable also will come here. Yeah, payable will also come. No, the, this is next step actually. As a part of next step, we will see like uh, how we will enable also for the sub ledger module. So oh, this, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, this is just enabling for a ledger that this ledger can use budgetary controls. Okay, okay. Yeah. And what is this project here? You are speaking about the project's module or something yes, else? Yes, project module. Okay, okay. So here, if you see, these are exceptions. So exceptions is nothing but uh, the, the if the journal source is uh, revaluation, system will not calculate uh, the budget because for the revaluation and the opening balance, closing balance, we will not need any restriction. So that is why we are giving this. Similarly, if there are some cases where for a particular journal, journal sources, we don't want to restrict uh, on a particular budget, then uh, we, we can uh, give the exception here. So that system will allow only those particular uh, journal source to el eliminate or take off this budget control. Mm. Okay. Okay. So we have enabled budget. We have enabled budget at the ledger level. Yes, correct. So now we have uh, created uh, the budget and uh, we will uh, try to create a calendar for our budget. I have just selected uh, the budgetary control only and I have given the number of period that is 12 that is monthly budget or if you wanted to have the quarterly basis maybe we will have to give four so we have given the start date so I'll click next so this is our system will create so we will have to give uh, the start date and end date here in this case because if we wanted to have different uh, date range that we can define so that is why oracle has defined this way that uh, we will select the end dates uh, okay so if i wanted to select the uh, you know period like uh, jan 1 to jan 31st something like that automatically if it wanted to select there is no option it will always yeah, uh, for this, we like, don't have automatic option. Okay, okay. So the one which is in this period, it will be considered for budgetary control. That's what you're asking. Yes, you're asking. Co yes correct. 
okay so so in in case if i if i say uh, uh, for a yeah, first uh, month or uh, you know within 10 days i'll be using uh, all my purchases and expenses and all those things and after 10th onwards i am going to only do a reset receiving part so i i if i wanted to enable only budgeting for the first 10 days then that is possible here yes you can enable only for the 10 days also yeah okay okay 10 days for all the categories whichever we have given yeah again there if you want to have exception we can have okay so this is Basically, only in the is... journal category yeah category is for exception but apart from that it will apply for the entire ledger and entire ledger and even if i wanted to restrict by the accounts that is also possible yes yes correct we can restrict by accounts as well okay yeah abhishek you are saying something yeah no no it answered my question i i have i also had the same so basically that exceptions that you defined in the previous that only for those sources it won't apply and it will apply for entire ledger yeah yes correct and yeah. for exception uh, for the accounts you will you will show it right yeah after, yes after yes, yes. okay What is the latest version, Arun or Fusion? R13. Fusion R13 that, is the latest one. After that, there is no version they released. Yeah, after that, uh, no release actually. They are uh, just giving on the R13 itself. We have uh, 2022 something like that. We have the latest uh, releases. Uh, there are on oh, R13.22 uh, itself. It came. Huh? Yeah, that is the latest, but. Uh, I mean, I'll check uh, the, with with the version name. I think it is twenty two D or something. I'll check and I'll confirm. And if I in case I take R thirty in my company, and uh, what my activity that I I can upgrade into to the or they have it in the packet and done done by Oracle or we have to do something. Sorry, your voice is breaking. I'm saying that uh, see yeah, after R13 there are like twenty two mm. versions it came right yeah. so uh, so if I take if I get a license for R13 then all these twenty two versions if I wanted to upgrade it do I need to do something or 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 it will automatically upgrade it no Oracle so will update it. it we don't uh, need to do anything so that is why they are asking us to take uh, the SaaS model basically so we don't need to do anything. Oh.
So we have uh, created the calendar for our budget. Mm -hmm. So we will try to give uh, the, the, the control for our budget. And can I create uh, uh, multiple calendar for the budget based on my ledgers? For one ledger, multiple uh, calendar. No, no, no. For one ledger, one, one uh, budget calendar. Yeah, that we can create. We can create multiple budgets. I mean, did, did that answer or your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answer it, answer it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so so this is what I was saying that we have uh, at uh, sub ledger and uh, we have also at the ledger level. So if you see here, so I will go one by one. So this is the budget name that we are giving. I am just saying KK budget and uh, the budget calendar what we have created. I am just attaching. And pre periods uh, just from there we can select. So I'm just selecting from 1 to 12. And here source if you see we have different options. So we have control budget, we have others and uh, no budget in the sense we, we don't want to use the budget option. And the other one is Hyperion planning. So this is a separate module. So where uh, it is based out with the Hyperion thing, whatever we had, similarly they have taken it and taken as in cloud planning. So this is uh, entirely separate module. Uh, I mean, even I haven't worked on this Hyperion also. So we have worked only the basic uh, thing like the control budget and uh, how does the budget affect our subculture and uh, the GL part. So if you want to enable Hyperion planning, then you have to have Hyperion tool. Yeah, yes. Okay. So the, there are few connections between that actually. So we have just given as a separate module. Uh, so from there okay, it will okay. uh, communicate. So, so so that we have to set up the way we will connect okay. here. And, yeah. Okay. So, so Hyperion planning is one option that we have that we will connect with uh, the Hyperion application what we have it with uh, Oracle Cloud as in planning and budgeting. And apart from that, we have other options. So that is uh, control budget. So control, control budget, budget is, is within EBS, within Fusion. Yeah, within Fusion it's is basic. correct. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, fine. Even Hyperion, it is within Fusion, but this is a separate uh, uh, module or the offering. So uh, okay. unless we configure that, we will not be able to use all the functionalities of uh, Hyperion. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, we have uh, the the normal budget and we have the control budget. So control budget is something where we will set up a budget and apart from that we will add another budget and we will attach the source budget if you see the control budget if we enable this particular uh, option system will ask us to attach the source budget but whereas if we select the others it will take this as a uh, primary budget the system will automatically give the name for our uh, budget so here uh, we are defining uh, the currencies. So if we have a requirement uh, to handle different currencies at the budget, we will have to define uh, different uh, budgets. So in this one only, control budget if you take, then I need to have one source budget created with the uh, source budget type as other. Then only I can create a control budget. Is that right? No. If it is control, no, so for example, yeah, yes, KK, correct, KK correct. budget, yeah, yes. KK budget, I have creating it as other now. Yes, and correct. now next I wanted to create KK budget one, then I, I can select this control and select KK budget as Yes, well. correct, correct. Okay, okay. Is control budget basically taking a copy of one you have already created and trying to do it? Yeah. 
it will basically takes the options what we have given it for uh, the 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 other budget and from there this uh, control budget will uh, copy down the features from there okay got it So we have just given the currency and uh, the rate type. So here we have uh, the, the four types or four control levels. So if you take an EBS, we have the absolute, we have advisory and we have none. In fusion, we have the other option also like track. So track is nothing but only for a reporting purpose. So apart from that, this will not restrict a user to enter or uh, uh, exceed the given budget limits this is one option and the second option what we have is that uh, advisory so advisory is something it will give us the warning that uh, the budget has reached the limit but still we will be able to make the transaction or host uh, the particular ledger uh, into our gl module but whereas if we choose uh, absolute but whereas if we choose absolute in case of absolute system will restrict us we will not be able to post any journal entries so for now i will take absolute and we will verify like how system is restricting us so this is like tolerance if at all we wanted to have the tolerance we can set like maybe five percent or if you want to give a set of amount that we can give mm. Then I mean, for track, a... what you said, uh, Arun, sorry, I missed that part. Yeah, track is only for a reporting purpose where it will not give us warning or it will not restrict us. So it will just uh, move as it is. It will not give any sign that it has uh, reached the limit. Okay, okay, okay. Only for a tracking purpose, that's it. Advisory is only warning, soft stop. Yeah, it's only warning. Okay. Only absolute is restriction. Okay, you are going to show in absolute only, right? Yeah, yeah. That is your uh, ringtone, Arun. Yeah, ringtone. <laughs> that ringtone, I feel you are scaring the entire house for everyone. <laughs> I thought some ambulance only. <laughs> <laughs> I think I didn't add the budget role. Just so before uh, giving the control budget, I mean attaching the budget manager. So basically, we we, we have to give the roles for this uh, particular user. So I'll just add role in uh, security console.
Hello, hi, can you hear me? Arun? Hello. It's not a control budget, na? Yeah, I mean, it is a control budget only. But, uh, okay, let me check once. It was others you have selected. I do not know. Whether... Let me check on this. Okay, for now, let me take uh, the one. Uh, let me come back and uh, change this thing. Okay, so the other options are like we have uh, if you want to increase the budget, let's say we have given for 1,20,000 and uh, there is a slight change and we wanted to have maybe 1,50,000. So do we want our system to increase or decrease the budget? So that is what about allow budget increase adjustments. And uh, if we want to decrease below uh, the funds available, that also we can do. And uh, we have other option that is override. <clears throat> Whether do we want to override this uh, set up that uh, what we have given. I mean, basically the exception part, if you wanted to have, we can have. Then we have uh, the budget segment. So basically we, we are enabling mostly for uh, the account segment. So for a company, if you are enabling it, then it will restrict uh, mo mostly like the entire uh, ledger restriction. So it is uh, account. And then if you have uh, the, the parent and child combination, then we can enable the tree as well, so that it will work based on the parent and child relationship as well. Then we have the supplemental rule. So supplemental rule is something that here, if you see, we have given for the entire uh, ledger. We didn't give for a particular uh, account range. So this will apply for this particular segment completely. So if we want to override this particular uh, combination that is not for the entire uh, segment, but only for a few values, that we, there we can define a supplemental group. So here, if you see, we will select a business unit. So here again, we will have the absolute and advisory. So let's say we have selected absolute at uh, the header level, that is in the previous setup, we have given absolute to restrict. 
So for this particular combination, if we want to give the advisory, so system will override the earlier setup and system will consider the supplemental setup. Okay. So similarly here also we have the tolerance uh, limit uh, to enable. And if you want to enable for a particular set of accounts that also we can give it from here. So here I can give uh, specific values. By clicking the value details, we can attach uh, specific values where, from where to where we wanted to have control. That we can give here. So for now, I will uh, have control on all the values. So this is again depends on our uh, segment level. All uh, the values in the I didn't get that. Uh, sorry, can you please come there? Yeah, which one? The segment filters. Segment filters, yeah. Yeah, segment filters. So basically, we have given this combination for the entire uh, segment. That is not for a oh, particular okay. range. So okay. here, if you want to have, let's say, from account 1 to 10, that we can define for a specific values. Okay. Yeah, fine. Yes, yes. Okay, so basically here we have given the account segment. Uh, apart from that, we have additional segment, maybe the project segment. If you wanted to have the control, that also we can give. So we don't have other segments. We have only the company. So I mean, I'm just leaving this option, but we can enable for the other segment also. So that is why the additional segment filters. And here we will see the, the what you call uh, the sub wise uh, uh, the restriction if you want to have. So business function, so we can uh, click here. So if you see, we wanted to have, if we want to have for uh, the journal entry and uh, the payable invoice purchasing, for those things also we can use this particular option. So similarly, we have the journal source as well. So if you want to restrict uh, any particular source that we can do, or we can enable for all the sources or the categories. So here as well, if you want to have only for the expense, we can have. So mostly we will enable this option only for the expense uh, account types. Okay. So receiving destination, like if we have the inventory and uh, expense, so that also we can enable. So basically sub supplemental rule is something that if we want to override uh, the header level setup and we wanted to have a specific set of uh, values to be uh, got into the control that we can de define at uh, supplemental rule. Okay. So we will save this particular budget. And if you see here the status, it will say that uh, not ready for use. So we will have to make it prepare. So let's say there is a case that we have included maybe out of 100 accounts, we have included 50 accounts and uh, by mistake, we didn't include another 20 accounts in the supplemental rule. So we will not be able to edit uh, the setup what we have given. So what we have to do is that we will have to end this particular supplement rule and we will have to close this. And again, we will have to redefine this particular budget. Mm. Yeah, th that is one restriction that we have it in uh, this fusion. So I I'm just clicking prepare for use.
So like if you see here, we, we will be seeing the, the, the cubes generating for each budget. The reason being is that uh, since this is touching the accounting part of it, it is creating the cubes. So wherever we have the accounting impact, system will create cubes for those setups or the transactions. Okay, so this is done. So maybe we can now uh, navigate and we wherever can... we have the accounting impact. What do you say to the last line? Yeah, where we have the accounting impact, system will create cubes for us. Okay. Since we are applying for the particular account code combination, system is creating the cube for this. So that this will help us in terms of uh, reporting aspects. So maybe we will see. Uh, we will see after once we complete this uh, budget part. We will see. You have simple... taken all. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. You have taken all in the account code combination all segments into consideration. You have. Yes, correct. You have done. You have taken account segments no? or you have taken all the segments? No, account segment. Basically, we have only two segments. The yeah, company yeah. and... You have taken, yeah, you have taken account segments for the budget. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This seems like a logical break. Can we stop here today? Yeah, fine. No problem. Yeah. Fine, Sajesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. So, uh, just tell me uh, on this what is pending in the budget part, so that we will note it down. We have uh, done the configuration. So the next step is to uh, check the status of the budget, and from there we will upload uh, the budget. So that is through the spreadsheet. So after that we will try to check with a uh, few transactions. That is. Uh, what about uh, what about allocating budget that we have not done not till now? Allocating budget in the sense you are saying mass allocation or uh, you are saying no, not mass allocation. I'm I'm saying that if I wanted to uh, mm -hmm. have an account as one two three four five, I wanted to allocate some uh, fifty thousand dollars for that particular yeah, account. Yeah. And more yeah. than that, operations that will should stop yes, restricting. Yes. Yeah. So that yeah. allocation part is not done, na? Yeah, that is not done. So that is what we will upload through the Excel sheet. Okay, fine then, fine then. So that part we will see uh, day after tomorrow's class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then we will stop for today because it has been long session. Two hours. Okay. Fine. Yeah. No. Okay. You also take rest. Okay. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Sure. Enjoy too.